Hello everybody, <coughs> excuse me, welcome everybody, thank you for coming. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is congratulate you on turning up and having the, the guts to come out and find a bit of truth for once. Uh, it takes a lot of guts, I know it does, and uh, it's time to stand up and speak up and have the guts. So a round of applause for you, thank you very much. Uh, make no mistake about it, um, we are in a war. Uh, chemtrails, stroke geoengineering, call it what you will, are a significant arm of that war on humanity. Chemtrails, uh, we're going to try and figure out a few answers to questions tonight. Um, chemtrails, geoengineering presentation, there are some uh, people who do, uh, don't like calling it chemtrails, don't like calling it geoengineering, aerosol spraying, call it what you like, we're being poisoned from the skies. So, um, splitters and lumpers, uh, knock yourselves out. Um, I run the Free Truth Show on these changing times radio, .ning.com, get a plug in there. And I've been, um, I've been doing it for about three years, uh, off and on on the radio. Uh, doing YouTube videos on the Free Truth Show and Facebook, anywhere I can, or Fedbook as I like to call it, um, anywhere I can to get the message out to people. Um, so support the radio show, tune in when you can, Tuesday nights, 11 o'clock, etc. Um, I often bring on people who like to discuss what's happening in their world and uh, their world view. So um, the questions we're going to come up with and try and answer tonight are what are chemtrails, who is spraying us, uh, why are they spraying us, and how. You can see here, that's a classic chemtrail coming out of the aircraft. They're usually unmarked military jets. This is actually a view from space. Uh, it wasn't like that about 15 years ago. And um, if you do happen to see satellite images before, 15 years ago, uh, like that, then uh, it's a safe bet they're doctored, as NASA is doctoring satellite images, as is your weather girl, or boy. So, um, chemtrail, contrail. You can see the difference. Uh, this was probably laid about a minute ago, and this is being laid now, and it's already dissipating. I remember, I do remember the sky as a kid um, with lots of contrails and um, although they, they were rare, I admit that, uh, it's since come to light that um, the contrails may be magnetising the sky also. So, possibly unhealthy, uh, definitely deadly. So the difference is between a contrail, it's condensation trail. Um, it dissipates after 30 seconds to a minute tops. These hang around and form banks of cloud and wipe out, uh, white out the sky. Um, and when you see them being sprayed, you can see gravity pulling down the heavy metals. It's not rising up or out, it, it, they're coming down straight away, plumes. And then they spread out usually and form banks of cloud and hang around for hours. Another example, chemtrail, contrail. Some of you will have seen this talk before that there are some new elements, hence I was shuffling around with the papers because there are some new stories in and I've added new elements, so uh, hang in there. This is Bournemouth, uh, the day of the Bournemouth Air Festival. <coughs> and what a festival it was. It's my belief, having studied harp and cloud seeding, that they absolutely uh, chucked the rain down on us with cloud seeding because the year before uh, they had to cancel. It's a lot of money. Um, so I'm convinced, having spoken to one of the RAF guys on the ground who was a bit young and leaked, uh, that it was weather modification that caused thousands upon thousands of uh, damage to this town and homes. But got to have their air festival to make their money. Here we have some spitfires and hurricanes. The proud days of the RAF who stood against Hitler and tyranny. And uh, here we have chemtrails 
uh, possibly from the RAF or NATO, um, fighting tyranny, fighting terrorism? No. We are the terrorists, apparently. Anyone who is anti-government. It's very Soviet, isn't it? That term, anti-government. Alan Watt from Cutting Through the Matrix makes a good point about that. So there we are, there's the pavilion, and uh, lest we forget. Which I, which I kind of find a macabre, macabre kind of irony in that. Um, <laughs> the reason I show Ravel kit is because they're more detailed. This is a, a KC-135 Boeing Strato tanker. This is one of the main planes they use, along with McDonnell Douglas and um, various other ones, apparently a Sentinel, which I'll come to. And you can see that it's ideally um, designed to bring a massive payload. Um, and they talk about megatons of aluminium oxide and sulfates being uh, cast into the atmosphere. And David Keith, the geoengineer, says, it's very cheap. Cost is not a problem. But to hell with your health, I guess. There's a classic example of chemtrails spreading out and forming the milky white cloud. Again, spreading out and forming this milky white cloud. This is a blue sky over um, Hanover, Germany, I believe, uh, during the volcano from Iceland. What a lovely day. And this is um, after. Uh, I, was, I was in Spain actually and I couldn't get home at all because the French trains were on strike as well, so um, very, very difficult to not get the difference there. And again, you get these kind of coloured effects. Uh, sometimes they form chem bows. I've seen an upside down chem bow in um, Ibiza. And uh, very strange kind of coloration there. That is usually, tests have shown that it's um, ethylene diabromide, highly carcinogenic. And here is, um, apparently this is Sirius aviaticus, according to Wikipedia. The last five pictures I've shown you is what you can expect to find on Wikipedia if you're a bit curious about chem uh, contrails. You look up contrails, you want to know the difference, you go to Wikipedia, they show you these five examples. Very trusted site, yeah? So that sorts that out for the newbie. Again, this is actually a harp sky where, where they throw up electromagnetic pulses from Alaska or Norway or uh, Wales, actually, there's one in Wales. And they triangulate and um, the sky becomes a plasma and you get this typical kind of ribbing effect. More contrails. No? Chemtrails. Right. Excuse my flippant attitude, um, but you develop a kind of gallows humour after, after three or four years. It uh, gets you through. I'm sure you can all relate to that. Uh, Eaton County, Michigan, USA. By the way, this is global. This is a global black operation. <coughs> this is California, uh, 2010. Here's a few examples. California again. Can you see all right when I stand in the way? It's probably not, actually. There we are to stand out of the way when I'm showing you. This is um, the Open Skies Treaty. The Open Skies Treaty. Uh, it's a committee supported by the Forum for Security uh, Cooperation Support Unit in the OSCE Secretariat, again sounds very Soviet, doesn't it? The central focus of the committee is to discuss all questions related to compliance with treaties provisions. Uh, the treaty was designed to promote openness and transparency in military activities, establish a regime of observation flights over the territory of its signatories. This is how they're able to do it and fly wherever they like, uh, in an strictly an observational role, you see. Uh, signatories are allowed to conduct observation flights using unarmed 
fixed wing aircraft to gather information about military forces and activities of other state parties from Vancouver, uh, Vancouver to Vladivostok. Uh, the treaty also envisages the possible extension of the open skies regime to additional areas such as crisis management and protection of the environment. <coughs> crisis management. Alan Watt from CuttingThroughTheMatrix.com is one of the best minds and best genuine minds on the planet regarding the New World Order agenda. I'd recommend it. He says about the Open Skies Treaty. Uh, now that tells you why would something to do with military establishments and nuclear weaponry, etc., why would they have to go into crisis management and protection of the environment? Protection, not observation, but protection of the environment, and below it has treaties in a list of the countries. There are more joining all the time because this is happening on a world scale, and when you see the amount of stuff that's sprayed daily pretty well over your heads, you realise this is drifting from hundreds and hundreds of miles and sometimes thousands of miles to other countries that ultimately no one can stay away from it. However, these are the main treaty members and they will see the spraying over their heads, which is nothing to do, obviously, with observation. Uh, these are contrails, uh, condensation trails. Condensation trails, as an aircraft comes across the horizon, you'll see it. A few hand spans behind the craft, you'll see the, the tail of the condensation disappearing as moisture would have to. It can't sit there forever like a big cycle in the atmosphere. It dissipates into the dry air and disappears. The ones we see are not condensation. They're chemical, and remember what I just said, the treaty also envisages the possible extension of the open skies to additional areas which as crisis management and protect and protection of the environment. And then it lists all the countries, most of Europe, uh, apart from Switzerland. Uh, Switzerland does get sprayed any, anyhow, and so does China. Uh, the real intent of the Open Skies Treaty was simply to deal with uh, a threat from out there, the environment, you see. But it's also to do with controlling people, crisis management. Remember, there is a United Nations effort and the World Health Organization uh, that's part of the United Nations, um, unelected governing body, uh, already years ago talked about lacing certain water supplies with tranquilizers to calm people who might just want to get rather nasty if their country was being taken over. That's the United Nations folks, the, the UN, the UN, uh, one. Hillary Clinton, the United States CFR, the United States believes that it is essential for the Open Skies Treaty to remain a vital instrument in our Euro-Atlantic conventional arms control toolbox. <laughs> That's lovely, isn't it? Hillary Clinton, uh, she added, we will encourage new thinking about applying open skies towards emerging challenges and threats. I'm guessing that's people who don't like being poisoned from the sky, uh, organising themselves. So that's the OSCC, the Open Skies Treaty. That's Peterborough, January 2012. I'll leave it to take a good look at that while I get some notes on it. This is from uh, the Worcester News. These are the new elements I've been speaking about. The Worcester News from the 17th of January, 2012, not long ago, 11.30 a.m. Spy in the sky mystery as aircraft circle city. Is there something like Richard Vermeil's from worcesternews.co.uk? Is there something we should know? What appears to be a spy plane has been spotted circling the city, but its purpose is a mystery. The plane, which looks to be a Sentinel twin jet aircraft, was seen in the clear blue sky above Worcester yesterday. It was about 2,000 feet. Uh, the RAF air traffic controllers, who were unable to shed any light on its identity, that's because they're usually unmarked. Let's take another. I wish I could get a closer look at that, but you'll see generally on, on the top of them, along the wings, no numbers. Illegal, against civil aviation and military law. Got to be identified. Otherwise, it could be under attack from the skies. <laughs> um, and 
despite the Worcester News putting in calls to civilian air traffic controllers, still remains a mystery. It's not the first time, etc., etc. Uh, but it's the first time this type of plane has been spotted. It was photographed. Um, the military version, the Raytheon Sentinel, has a distinct bulge under the front of the cockpit, probably full of aluminum oxide, which can be seen on the photo. And the RAF operates a complement of the planes from RAF Waddington. An RAF spokesman said Waddington had no planes out over the area yesterday, between the time it was sighted. Uh, Twitter user Sean Mooney appears to contradict that, however, when he said, I can confirm it was the Sentinel of 5 Squadron Waddington as I work on it. The Ministry of Defence has announced its RAF Sentinel planes adapted to carry sophisticated radar. Radar, 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 whitewash, whitewash, spin, 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 radar. They're not going to tell you. Uh, what they don't mention here, this is the spin, is that the trails seem to be lasting a bit longer than usual. Well, maybe it's normal now, maybe people don't question it. They're so used to 15 years of it. If you speak to somebody who's 15 years old, they're not going to know the difference, are they? So maybe it is normal that we're being sprayed like bugs. But it doesn't mention anything about, uh, obviously, chemtrails or geoengineering, <coughs> weather modification, which is uh, ongoing and admitted by many of the geoengineer scientists I'm about to introduce you to. Again, this is from um, somewhere else, another newspaper. Uh, NATO pilots use Peterborough airspace for training. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? Uh, but however, the public, they take pictures like this. <coughs> That's some training exercise, isn't it? I mean, presumably that, that drifted in, because no plane super tanker would be able to do that over the church in such a small space, so maybe that drifted in. But still, that's quite some manoeuvre. I've seen big X's in the sky, asterisks, I've even seen a, a, a compass <laughs> with a square over it. <laughs> but um, again, excuse my humour. <coughs> When we look at some of the patterns, sorry, here we have stratospheric wells back seeding for reduction of global warming. Uh, this invention relates to a method for the reduction of global warming uh, resulting from the greenhouse effect, and in particular to a method which involves the seeding of the Earth's stratosphere with wells back like materials. Most current approaches to reduce global warming are to restrict the release of various greenhouse gases, such as CO2. Oh, big problem. <laughs> it describes several different proposed methods of geoengineering, including spraying sulfate aerosols into the atmosphere, stratosphere, sorry, to mimic the cooling effect produced by volcanic eruptions, <laughs> as well as placing mirrors in space to reflect the sun's rays away from the Earth, a technique known as Solar radiation management. <laughs> We're gods, let's manage the planet. We can manage the climate, we can change it. We don't have to tell the public. They can just die like bugs. To hell with the rivers being polluted as well. We can clean it up, we've got the technology probably. Probably, just do it. Something wrong with these people, these scientists. We're living under a scientific dictatorship. That's what it is, that's what all the, um, the think tanks are still discussing now. Uh, a brave new world revisited, if you like. Aldo Huxley, uh, Bertrand Russell, all these elite aristocratic uh, psychopaths are running the planet and perhaps always have done. And they're guiding society and it's, it's, it's death for anyone who opposes it or hasn't earned enough money over generations to be elite and special and a different species, which is what they actually think they are. So that's what we're dealing with. Uh, banksters with a lot of money, a lot of gall, and absolutely no conscience. That is your enemy. That is the war on humanity. But they've got to dress it up and they own the media. Rothschild owns Reuters. 
which gives the news to AP, Associated Press, which then dishes it out across the planet. And the journalists are given handouts, etc. And they, most of them don't write, even write the stories, so they just get drunk in the Red Lion next to the House of Commons and take the wage packet. But I digress. I've actually lost my list of who these people are, but I should remember. Oh, this is the president of the Royal Society. People involved in this House of Commons report. Yes, a highly Freemasonic society, very old, the Royal Society. Sir Paul Nurse, <laughs> which I think is a great name for somebody uh, geoengineering the planet without any regard to the consequences of your health. Mr. Nurse. One notable member of the Royal Society is James Lovelock, an eco-fascist who advocates ending democracy and in instituting an authoritative elite to oversee global, global climate management. He's also a patron of the Optimum Population Institute, a notorious uh, UK-based public policy group that campaigns for the gradual decline in the global human population. Campaigns for it to what it sees as a sustainable level, and you'll hear that word everywhere. Yeah. My toilet is sustainable, it's, it's everywhere. The United Nations tells me what kind of toilet I can use. That I need a sustainable visit to the loo. I, it's everywhere, sustainable, sustainable, sustainable. But apparently we're not sustainable, <laughs> so we've got to go. These are the nuts that I'm introducing. Um, he's an ardent advocate of geoengineering, James Lovelock, uh, in the name of controlling the climate. Uh, in 2007, Lovelock, this is still support Paul Nurse, uh, so James Lovelock, Gaia, Mother Earth, books from, you know, in the 90s. He, he proposed uh, laying vast swathes of pipes under the world's oceans in order to pump water from the bottom of the seas rich in nutrients, but mostly dead to the top, uh, for algae to breed uh, a chemical known to seed uh, sunlight reflecting clouds, dimethyl sulfide. Uh, so that's the House of Commons report. What they failed to mention is that they've been doing it for years. Now who's patron of the Optimum Population Trust? <laughs> In the UK. No. I thought I'd include this nice <laughs> tragedy <laughs> symbolism here. <laughs> <your enemy. coughs> ah, Sir David. <laughs> now, we've all grown up with Sir David, the big father figure who's been dishing out lo lots of wonderful information. <laughs> here is a bird which is ultimately far more important than you. <laughs> I want to depopulate the planet, and I'm a psychopath, naturally. So he, while he's cavorting with gorillas, he's actually um, enjoying the demise or planning the demise of the public and trying. He's obviously on board as, as the figurehead. It's a good idea. Jump off a cliff for the planet. There's too many of you anyway, etc., etc. Sick man. Another psychopath. Here's one. John P. Holdren, the current White House science czar. Czar. Uh, of Obama administration. Uh, he wrote a book in 1977 called um, Eco Science. He's a White House science czar. He's a key advisor who infamously <coughs> co-authored a book in which he called for a planetary regime, and you can get the book, it's about 500 pounds. Uh, he, he called for a planetary regime to enforce draconian population control measures such as forced abortion, infanticide, and mandatory sterilization. In April last year, Holden revealed that the high level talks had already taken place to explore the possibility of geoengineering the environment by shooting pollution particles into the upper atmosphere to reflect the sun's rays. It's got to be looked at, he said. It's got to be looked at. He's quoted as saying, we don't 
have the luxury of taking any approach off the table. The AP, Associated Press, also reported that Holdren said he had raised the concept in administration discussions. Well, Obama has no real power. His job is to lie to the public, any politician, lie to the public like a good psychopath and um, sign a few treaties and have a few prostitution parties now and again at your expense. Such interest in, so these people are the, the scientists behind uh, the, the White House table, the House of Commons. They advise, you see, they, they, they yield extraordinary power. Who are they? Apparently when he walks into a room, even Rockefeller <coughs> almost bows down. Who are these people? Where do they breed them? Such intense interest in exploring geoengineering and implementing an overarching global authority on the matters mirrors publications penned by the ultra-elite Council on Foreign Relations. In a document entitled Geoengineering Workshop on Unilateral Planetary Scale Geoengineering, the CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, which is in itself a sister wing of the Royal Institute of International Affairs, which sets policy virtually worldwide of which Margaret Thatcher um, said, we don't leave, she's quoted as saying, Margaret Thatcher, wonder why she stripped the country so much? Why does she make so many big mistakes? Shutting the coal mines, everything down. Why did she, did, why, why did she make such vast mistakes that, were, that didn't benefit the people? Whoops a daisy. Because after office, she goes to Canada and gives, gives a talk entitled, the New World Order. That's who she is. She's Royal Institute of Inter International Affairs, and she's quoted as saying, I'm digressing, but I want to give you an idea of who these people are and who the real power is. Um, we don't leave government when we leave office. We go higher. We, go, we join the shadow government. That way we're not accountable to the people. Uh, it's more efficient. We can get things done. So off she goes and gives a talk on the New World Order. Um, yeah, so the CFR is the sister wing of that. I've been there, you knock on their blue Masonic sky blue door, the big lion's knocker, and um, they're in St. James's Square, it's a fairly innocuous looking building, a stone's throw from the Buckingham Palace that gives royal charters for this kind of thing to the Royal Society, etc. Peter Filio, etc. Anyway, Fred Singer, a president of the Science Environmental Policy Project and a skeptic of man-made global warming <coughs> theories, has warned that the consequences of tinkering with the planet's delicate ecosystem could have far-reaching dangers. If you do this on a continuous basis, you would depress the ozone layer and cause all signs. So there are all sorts of problems. So there are voices of dissent now and again, but they, they don't last long in their jobs, or worse, or both. I'll give you an example of that later too. Even Greenpeace's chief UK scientist, the staunch advocate of the man-made global warming explanation, Doug Parr, has attempt, uh, attempts to geoengineer the planet as outlandish and dangerous. We're talking about Greenpeace a bit later on as well. Um, so that's a great article from Paul Joseph Watson. That's the book that he wrote, Eco Science, John P. Holden, the current White House Science Star. Some more chemtrails spreading out. That was probably laid about 10 seconds before this shot was taken. <coughs> that about a minute. You can see the heavy metals oxide beginning to pour out from the gravity itself. It's not going up. And they've obviously been at it all day there. So they're painting the sky. Perhaps they think they're artists. Quite why, quite how you get into a plane and do that. What kind of story they must tell you. Uh, what kind of mind control you must be under or something, or drugs, or don't worry, we'll give you advanced military medicine. For whatever reason, it's uh, killing a lot of people and uh, it's absolutely devastating the environment and the rivers and the soils. If you don't care about yourselves, at least you'll want to leave a clean planet behind. Eh? 
because we're being trained to our survival instincts have been are being trained out of us through the media like we don't matter euthanasia it's fine have an abortion it's fine etc uh, get sterilized it's fine save the planet etc but they're going to come out very soon and say yep we're doing it but it's for your own good and by that time everyone will be like yeah i, I think that's my opinion yeah i agree and, and that's my opinion Uh, climate gate, I'm going to skip all the, um, the climate gate and sort of global warming nonsense because it has been exposed as a fraud and I did cover it a lot in the last talk so um, I'll leave all the articles here for people to see. Uh, climate gates when all the emails from the University of East Anglia was hacked, God bless him, the hackers, and showed that they were fixing the figures and frauding and uh, threatening scientists um, to hide the decline in temperature. It's not actually warming. CO2 is not our enemy. Um, and by the way, we're a large percentage of us is carbon. So I guess that's out, out the window as well. Um, I wanted to talk about the SPICE project. Here's some more examples. I think that's California again, or Arizona. Well, people are complaining in Arizona now that there's no blue skies. <laughs> An inconvenient arrest. Al Gore, he's the poster boy for the global warming, uh, sorry, climate change now. Uh, scam, fraud. Um, again, there's the Church of Climatology. I thought mm -hmm. I'd lighten things up a bit. <laughs> Why not? The uh, yeah. Obama. Okay. The Spice Project, I'll get to this. The First Global Revolution is a book by the Club of Rome that mentions that uh, mankind is the enemy, etc., etc. <laughs> Sorry my uh, notes are all over the place, but um, when I went to the printing shop, uh, the internet cafe, uh, it was now a shop. So I had to run down to the other side of town with two broken ribs. Um, that's why they're all a bit all over the place. A bit of a shame. But this is the first global revolution. It's a report by the infamous... Oh, it's in my hand. The infamous Club of Rome think tank. This is how the world is ran by private organisations, by charities, by think tanks, uh, all working for the various royal families and the, um, the international bankers. They've always ran the show. First Global Revolution, a report by the Council of the Club of Rome. On page 75 of their 1990 publication, it would seem that humans need a common motivation namely uh, a common adversary, to organise and act together in the vacuum. Such a motivation must be found to bring the divided nations together to face an outside enemy, either a real one or else one invented for the purpose. This is a massive think tank, big, one of the big daddies along with the Royal Institute of International Affairs. In searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like, would fit the bill. Fit the bill. I'll read that again. In searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like, that would fit the bill. All these dangers are caused by human intervention. And it's only through changed attitudes and behaviour that they can be overcome. The real enemy, then, is humanity itself. You're the problem. They create the problem. It's the Hegelian dialectic, I guess. You know, you can probably repeat it back to me. Uh, problem, reaction, solution. So they've created the, the problem. Um, we react and beg that you do something about the climate because it's terrible. What will you do? And they come up with the, with the, the solution. Geoengineering, etc. While they've been bumping people off, 
uh, since well before World War II. Uh, the SPICE project, you're going to love this, uh, climate fix technical test put on hold. That's basically, they want to pump lots of stuff into the air and create um, a volcano effect. But it's having a delay because more, more, more talk with the public and, and more consultation is needed. It means they've probably done it, you know. So I'm going to move on from climate. I'm also going to skip the Dorset biological trials. If you, have, if you think, if you're worried that they're, are they doing it now or not, they've done it before. In Dorset from 1963 to 75, I believe, they parked a ship, the ice whale, off the Dorset coast and sprayed Lots of nasty stuff, biological chemicals, E. coli, anthrax mimicking agents, and various other stuff. And then they had various, there's Porton Down, a biological trial center. Porton Down experimental place. I think it's still open, is it? Yeah. And asked whether they um, were still doing things like that now. But the MOD said, well, we can't possibly comment on ongoing operations, etc. You know. That's the ice whale. And then they had various monitoring stations set up to check out how everybody was doing. In case the Russians attacked, you know. Hey, that's great. There's all the... Um, you can check this out. The, the, the DICE trials and uh, Dorset biological trials. Please check it out. I'm just saving a bit of time. Owning the weather by 2025. Uh, again, uh, a document from uh, designed for, written for the United States Air Force. I'm not blaming the United States for everything. This is a global problem. NATO is spraying us. Unmarked military jets are spraying us. Uh, private companies like Evergreen Air, which is a CIA front, may be spraying this. There's a lot of good indications that they may be spraying. When you look at some of the people involved, <laughs> then it's very likely that, that this Evergreen Air story is real. Uh, Evergreen International. So, uh, owning the weather by 2025. And they go into great detail, at great length, about how they can manipulate the, the atmosphere and own the weather by 2025. I'd say they were pretty on target. Pretty well on target. Applying weather modification to military operations, etc., etc., etc. So big reports, owning the weather by 2025. Check that out. This is how the chemtrails spread out. And what goes up must come down, I guess. So um, our job is to alert the public that this is happening and encourage others to do the same. It was like that on Friday the 13th, actually, in January, around, around Dorset. Uh, I've got video over 50 hours of footage that I personally filmed myself of, of Dorset being absolutely hammered, generally, with the chemtrails. And you can watch them spread out. Go to my YouTube channel, sorry to plug it, but Free Truth Show, as you live here, you'll see 50 hours of aircraft spraying contrails, chemtrails, the difference, everything. Uh, free Truth Show YouTube, and you see that a lot. They're flying a bit close together, aren't they? That's not the Bald Air Festival. That's quite common. A lot of people are alarmed. They ring in in County Clare the other day. They, they rang in um, hundreds of people rang into the station, concerned at, um, about these these flights doing circles. So it was in Clare, County Clare as well. That's virtually the west of Ireland. What's in them? A lot of people around the world are suffering from skin complaints. We spoke to uh, the mayor of Salisbury. Uh, Sam handed out some leaflets with me on, on the skid day, the Salisbury uh, Chemtrail Info Day. In Southampton and Salisbury, we're going to Reading next to hand out leaflets. And um, luckily we bumped into the mayor 
of Salisbury and his wife had to have uh, out riding her bike and the bits of skin that were exposed became very rashy and she had to have her rings cut off because her, her, swell, her hands swelled out so much. And um, the mayor was very much in agreement that it is going on and he's not happy about it. He won't be there for long then. <laughs> So that's quite a surprise. So there are people there available to help you. He may be in the lodge, I don't know, but there are people there to help. Actually, incidentally, I'll be taking questions after the talk, if that's okay. So I'm a bit all over the place and I'm easily distracted. So forgive me if I'm ignoring any questions or um, signals from the audience. Uh, we found, but well, I haven't found, but uh, Carnacom Institute, the Carnacom Institute has found various fibers. People are suffering the health effects bad. We know that flu-like symptoms that persist and hang around. We know that Alzheimer's uh, from the aluminium oxide is a problem. We know that bronchial problems are uh, through the roof. We know that allergies have, have spiraled out of control. We're all getting zapped by peanuts. That's the problem, yeah? That's why asthma is through the roof. Cancers are one in two now. When I was a kid, I didn't know anybody with cancer actually. And by the time I got to 15, I perhaps knew a friend or uh, that was suffering from it, that knew a friend or something. But now it's apparently it's one in two. And doctors are taught that it's quite normal. The doctor's out of school, out of medical school now. Just give them lots of drugs. Or <laughs> Actually, you're lucky if you're seen by a doctor these days. Uh, if you go to an NHS hospital in England, you are taking your life, uh, you are risking your life. <clears throat> so if, even minor operations really. They're switching off people's food and liquids and everything, they're murdering people in hospitals. Now that does sound a bit nuts, uh, but I encourage you to do your own research and I guarantee you'll come to the same conclusion. Um, so more gallons is, it's not a disease, it's the result of uh, bioengineered fibres that are coming out from the chemtrails. Whole towns are getting problems with this after heavy spraying. Whole towns are becoming sick after heavy spraying in America, etc. And these are the, the type of effects that you get. I know somebody in Hastings, Anne from Hastings Against Chemtrails, uh, she's got fibres coming out of her fingers and thumb. I've seen video footage of, of a woman um, wiping the bottom of her foot and these white fibres are just continuously coming out, like little worms. And you, a lot of the fibres are self-replicating. What does that tell you? A lot of them, a lot of them, over hundreds of degrees temperature, when they're exposed to them, don't burn. What does that tell you? Some are even fluorescent under the microscope. So we're, we're, we're talking about I don't know, nanotechnology or something. Now, I'm, I'm going a bit way off the track here, but it is way off the track. But the, the effects and the lesions that people are getting and suffering, I know, I know one woman was supposed to give a talk, bless her heart, she couldn't do it. Her daughter had uh, committed suicide after being driven to drink because no doctor would help her. People are desperate. I even heard somebody jumping out of a plane or a helicopter or something. People are so desperate from the itching, you know, it makes your skin crawl. So. Apparently, every one of us has this, these, these kind of, uh, a large percentage of us, according to Clifford Carnicom from uh, Carnicom Institute, where all the analysis is done and can be seen on the web for everyone to publish. It's under a lot of pressure. Um, you can see these fibres and various other things. Red blood cells, I'll show you. Um, here's some of the fibres. At 60 magnification. Uh, nano communications array. I'm not certain of that, but they do look very strange and they shouldn't be in your body, whatever they are. Um, these kind of things. Could be anything. But also, you get uh, types of uh, fluorescent ones that are at the end there. Uh, these fibres are fluorescent. I mean, what the hell are these things? They light up. Um, as well as the heavy metals that are in your blood. None of this should be in your system. That's the gel, it's 
the gel had been found in various things. And the funny thing is, we, each patient has, uh, many patients have different reactions to this stuff, and some don't get affected at all. About 25% don't get affected at all. And there you can see various lots of things from this. That's Vegas. Vegas, all spreading out, chemtrail, chemtrail, chemtrail. And another big problem is the Tetra Towers that you'd see on the buildings all around town and every town in the, in the Western world, as far as I know. It may be everywhere. And these, these pulse out. It's supposed to be for emergency services, police, um, radios, communication. But people are getting ill when they're living here. And because we don't talk to each other very much these days, I, I, I share wood and apples with my neighbour and I do it deliberately. There's people I've never spoken to on the road, I've started speaking to them a bit more. Because we don't do that anymore, um, people who live on these blocks of flats in Canada, for example, one example, um, they're all getting ill. And because they didn't speak to each other, they didn't know that they were all getting exactly the same symptoms once these things went up. So um, if you've got them by your house, Campaign to get them removed, or move yourself, or, 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 or do something else. Um, here are the strange things. I forget what that is. My notes are, are moving a bit around. But that's the red blood cells that have been found. That's Chester, Arkansas. <coughs> Pretty patterns in the sky. That's a kind of an asterisk. And I've seen one over Bournemouth, I'll show you it later, over Procter and Gamble. One subject I did want to get to was um, the BBC spin. The BBC is not independent. Sorry, never was. Great plays, etc., but you know. Lots of programming. And they failed to, to mention here that that wasn't a real cloud. Maybe a researcher missed that one. Or oh, nobody, you know, <coughs> so common. <coughs> oh, it looks like a, a fan or something, yeah. That's from the weather show. Well, I've seen the weather show where they're showing clear chemtrails. And this is where we're winning with the information. Because now, as opposed to a few years ago, a year ago even, we're seeing spin, spin, spin of these. They're having to come out and address the fact that these chemtrails are happening and the sky is different. Or, that's odd. Isn't that odd? But don't worry about it. Everything's fine. I'm going to talk to you like a child. Mm -hmm. If you notice, um, that's a technique that the, the, <laughs> the presenters talk to you like a child. You see? You mustn't scare the sheep. It's actually a, a neuro-linguistic technique, I believe. And I've seen the weather girl on breakfast, BBC Breakfast, blonde-haired girl, I forget which, and she's, she's going, this is nothing to worry about, this is a, a strange phenomenon, that's, it's, it's quite rare, but um, hmm, uh, next, don't worry about it. I've got another one here from Ta um, Chicago. This is um, Tammy Souza from Fox News. <coughs> Chicago, talking about um, the weather and how they're having a heat wave in January 2012. Having a heat wave, a bit like we did in December, wasn't it? December, we had a kind of a natural heat wave. <coughs> nice, but you know, what's causing it? There she goes. Um, she said, "These are these are the skies over Chicago today. These wispy clouds here, they're nothing really to worry about. They're probably clear." And uh, that's actually. I would say, personally, I would say from three years or four years of looking at the sky, well, that's chemtrail. Mm -hmm. Sorry about the accent. Or I'm, I love Americans, I'm not taking the mickey. Um, but in fact, on, I think it was January the 5th, <coughs> uh, luckily someone took a photograph and independently put it on YouTube showing the real uh, reason why it looked like that, that day. Chicago, Chicago. So there's the truth. 
while Fox News is not telling you the whole truth. Why is that? Because their banker owned whores! <laughs> That's Hanover, Germany. <coughs> Hanover, Germany. Tic-tac-toe, anybody? Minnesota. Minnesota. Should have put my computer there, isn't it? That's Minnesota. That's Harpy Sky from Harp, H A A R P. Please look it up. I'll get to it. That's one I took. The date is wrong. It's um that was this uh, last year, the end of last year. I think it was October, November. Pretty much like uh, the BBC one. Uh, that's Dorset, England, Parkston, Albany. Again, more chemtrails. That one's being freshly laid, you can see. Uh, is that one just about a crash? Should we bring up the RAF? We're concerned. We're very worried that some kind of battle of Britain is going on or something. The road of chemtrails, Mike. I rang up the RAF. We're putting you on notice, I said. These chemtrails, oh, hold on a second, chemtrails? Yeah, the chemtrails, the, the, the aerosol spraying, the geoengineering, the weather modification. Yeah, the, uh, well, I think they're contrails, contrails, contrails. Flight Lieutenant Lytton um, fought me off, put me onto their PR department. Everyone's got a PR department now. It's called that funky name for propaganda. I didn't even contact them. Who's delivering this stuff? To the, to the, how are they getting all this megatons of aluminium oxide? And one of the people, uh, it's Rent-A-Kill. I used to work for Rent-A-Kill. And um, I still do. No, I'm joking. Um, Rent-A-Kill is one of the companies, and Trimac, Rent to Kill is like a UK subsidiary of it or something. <clears throat> Trimac have been named as a possible supplier of the trucks to the places where, we don't know where, because it's a black operation, the, the uh, chemtrail planes are filled up with stuff. So you wonder who's doing it. Unusual truck activity across the US. Trimac is owned by Rentacule of the United Kingdom. They haul pesticides and chemicals for BASF, DuPont, big Illuminati family, and Bayer. Bayer, I think, is a pharmaceutical company. And, and most Rockefeller, who's a eugenics uh, demon, uh, owns most of the pharmaceutical companies. So keep taking the shot, folks. The vaccines are not there to help you, they're there to damage you, it's part of depopulation. So is that. Some nice colours there. But there is hope. There is hope. Suffolk County, Long Island. They go and talk into their representatives, they get uh, 30 seconds each, about a dozen of them got up and said, no, 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 we know what's going on, you bunch of... You, you guys are complicit in, in genocide if you don't know anything about it. Words to that effect. You're a doctor, etc., etc., etc. Why are you allowing this to go on? And they hope to get some legislation passed that would um, stop it. And it, it went through for a while to the next stage, and then it wasn't passed. So um, they probably didn't even look at the evidence. Whatever! They're not allowed to even talk about chemtrails. I'd like you to try a little experiment. Go up to a policeman and say, Are those chemtrails up there, officer? He'll, the English police are, turned, are trained, and I'm not joking. I've done it twice. Try it. If you ever get stopped or something, you know, it's brilliant. Put out cutting through the matrix on your car or something, isn't it? People don't get stopped for months. Or well, chemtrails, look up, you know, put it in your car. The English police are trained to turn around and walk away in the opposite direction if a member of the public mentions chemtrails. 
Sorry, I've got another job. I've got another job coming. The policeman actually lied to me. Said, sorry, I've got to go. I've got another job in. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, uh. So that's the <laughs> sorry, that's the type of response you can expect from the, from the police. Personally, I, I hope we I hope we um, convince many of the police and many of the, the military to be on our side because we need them. We're going to need them, and um, the, the higher echelons are going to need to be encouraged to arrest their superiors at some stage before we all snuff it from this stuff. Peacefully. Call it a coup d'etat, call it a revolution, call it whatever you like. It's, these guys hold the weapons and it is sometimes the only language they understand. You are not protecting the public. I'm arresting you, etc, etc. Court martial, whatever, jail. Something like that needs to happen because it's pointless going to the police, it's pointless going to Greenpeace, it's pointless to go into your government. We're on our own. So we have to stop this somehow. And the only way I can see us doing that is if we alert as many people as possible. And if a million people know about it, then maybe five million people will know about it. Because people don't know. People don't know that it's happening. They literally don't know. They think it's normal or they don't even bother looking up. Something is wrong. People are in a trance. They need to wake up. And uh, it's our duty and responsibility now uh, to do that, to get out there 24 hours a day if you can. Otherwise, humanity is toast. The, the effects on our health are incalculable. So it's, it's, it's people's public responsibility now, their duty, to, to warn others that this is happening. And hopefully if, if momentum builds up, then enough people might be able to stop it. Something will happen that will stop this. It can't go on. We can't, we can't allow it to go on. Simple as that. And uh, so, people are doing this, and, and I'm sorry to say, apart from raising awareness, which is really important, maybe it's worth doing things like this to raise awareness. It gets thousands of hits on YouTube or something, and new people become aware of it. Um, but ultimately, it's fruitless, because they have no power to stop it. Uh, I want to talk about, that's, that's a symbol for Trimac, the Deliverers. The Deliverers. Possibly. I, I, may, I may have broken ten libel laws already. Uh, the medical establishment, various government agencies, Greenpeace, whatever. Uh, Sue me. Sue me. That's the trucks delivering, trying that stuff. They're supposed to be marked, etc., with numbers, so you know where they are and where they're going. Now they're not. Now they're not marked. That's the Rhone Valley over France. That's north. That's the Rhone Valley. I would say they're not contrails. So that. Switzerland is not in the Open Skies Treaty. So don't spray them, otherwise you're in trouble. Flight lieutenant, whatever. But yet, yeah, they get the chemtrail drift. So that's, that's, that's just all puff, the treaties, etc. That's from space. And you might recognise this area. That's the English Channel. France, England, Isle of Wight. All of this off the map as usual. And here are the, the, are the, are the long streaks of cloud. Yeah? That was January the 16th, 2000. Sorry, oh, January the 18th, 2012. Now, in Bournemouth, you'll notice they fly mainly from north <coughs> to south. And it looks like they're going over Hastings or something. Generally, generally they fly from north to south, um, leaving the chemtrails. So they're taking off from somewhere north of London. It's not Bournemouth. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not Bournemouth. 
and flying south. There's a NATO base here in REM. I may have got that pronunciation wrong. I would ask Royce to lose his sleep. <laughs> okay. He works very hard. Um, <laughs> a, so there's a NATO base there, and um, they may, may be taking off from there, who knows. But they generally fly north to south over this land, over the ancient kingdom of Wessex, which is now being sprayed with chemtrail. This is the Ecuadorian president. He said on video, if these planes carry on spraying over my country, we will shoot them down. That's what the president said, apparently. I'm still alive. This is... Um, His name escapes me. He's head of a, a big environmental group in Croatia, I believe. And he's appealed to the military for help and to stand up and get a backbone and, and protect your women and children from the GMO foods being imported, which is very cancerous. Eat organic food when you can. We're under attack from all different levels. Remember what I said. It's a war on humanity. And this chap, um, he's since been arrested. He's, he's also called for uh, the military to help stop these chemtrail planes from flying over and spraying them. Serbia. Alexic. His name is Alexic. Um, and so they've arrested him and um, confiscated all his contents of his flat. And um, taken his flat as well, actually. And um, at the moment we don't know his fate. But people are desperate, and they're, they're, they're willing to put their neck on the line. But they can't get all of this. We're just trying to tell the truth. We're just trying to warn people that they're under attack, that it's very bad for the environment and our children. We're doing nothing wrong, we're peaceful. And that's, that's, that's it. It's the same, same in history, really. Again, there's some more. That's 1998. I added these little things here. It's not everyone's writing on their, their rooms and fences. <laughs> Castle Point, 2011. That's from Infonization Channel, YouTube. Great chap, Adam, running around, giving leaflets around in Dorset, Parkinson. It's a bit more in the world, is that one, isn't it? Woo! Next, we'll be talking about Pull it, trying to pull off a fake alien invasion over the Olympics or something. <laughs> Who knows what these nuts are going to do. That's pre-9-11, obviously. Chemtrail, chemtrail, chemtrail. I can tell you that's chemtrail. Well, that's a big wadge there, you see. <laughs> This is HARP in Alaska, H-A-A-R-P, HARP. Climactic, climatic manipulation by the US military, the HARP program. Uh, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, HARP, based in Kokona, Alaska, has been in existence since 92. It is part of a new generation of sophisticated weaponry under the U.S. Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI, operated by the Air Force Research Laboratory Space Vehicles Directorate. HARP con constitutes a system of powerful antennas capable of creating controlled modification of the ionosphere. HARP will be used to induce a small localized change in ionospheric temperature so that the resulting physical reactions can be studied by other instruments located at or close to the heart site. It's been called uh, a super powerful radioactive beaming technology that lifts areas, lifts areas of the ionosphere by focusing a beam and heating those areas. And you wonder about the heat waves in winter sometimes. 
Electromagnetic waves then bounce back onto the Earth and penetrate everything living and dead. So that's the one in Alaska. World-renowned scientist, Dr. Rosalie Bertel, depicts Harp as, she's now 80, as a gigantic heater that could cause ma major disruptions in the ionosphere, creating not just holes, but long incisions in the protective layer that keeps deadly radiation from bombarding the planet. That is absolutely nuts. Experimenting with our climate and the effects on our watery type bodies and our minds is something else to be looked at, something else to be investigated in. Make you feel happy? All oh, masses of people walking around shopping and then everyone's very depressed? Oh God. It's very common. It's very common. So seasonal affective disorder, I guess they'd call it. Sad. But if you're here today and you're like me, it means you're odd. Apparently there's a, there's a thing now. If you've got um, oppositional defiance disorder. <laughs> <laughs> Take the ruin! Take the drugs! Something wrong with you if you don't like what I do. Or something, you know. <coughs> That's tyranny, you know. It's nuts. <coughs> According to Richard Williams, a physicist and consultant to the David Sarnoff Laboratory in Princeton, Harp constitutes an irresponsible act of global vandalism. He and others fear a secret second stage where Harp could, would beam much more energy into the ionosphere that could produce a severe disruption of the upper atmosphere at one location that may produce effects, effects that spread rapidly around the Earth. <coughs> <coughs> so it's weather warfare. This is one in Wales. This is in Wales. Not far from here. There's one in Norway. And they have massive ones that are domes, that are seaborne on ships. And they're building more and more and more. Apparently China's up to speed now as well. So you punch a lot of electromagnetic power into the atmosphere. You triangulate it, point it to everywhere you want on the Earth, create a drought here, possibly make it rain here, make it more hot there, or um, fry a few dolphins in Iran or something. You know, whatever you want. It's all linked by one supercomputer, apparently. So. <laughs> It's, it's a bit disturbing to think that there's some mad scientist sitting there pushing the button, playing a big video game with our brains and our environment, you know. Some, some figure. It's probably Tony Blair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me. <laughs> He's now working as a consultant for Rothschild. Hey! What a surprise. And apparently, um, Mandelson, Mandelson boasted that he was running England from a Rothschild swimming pool in France. <laughs> Come on! The Prince of Darkness. Um, he was European trade minister. That, that's, that's a lot of power. That's a lot. Lots of deals, you see. Lots of deals. So weather warfare, a corporate bonanza. Um, I urge everyone to look at heart. Um, I was going to suggest that we have a break, but um, I haven't got much more to go through. So, um, how do you feel about a, a little break now? I'm, I'm a bit worried some of you might not come back or something. So, I'll carry on for another 20 minutes. How's that? Okay. Okay, Margaret. Yeah. Okay. One of the designers, Eastland, Eastland described this te deadly technology as capable of causing total disruption of communications over a large portion of the Earth, missile or aircraft destruction, deflection or confusion, weather modification. So when you talk about 
when Cohen, William Cohen, the, the former US Defense Secretary, talked about uh, tectonic weapons that they exist and all terrorists might use them in the future, <laughs> he, he was probably talking about things like this. So you combine it with the chemtrails, the chemtrails produce a plasma, and um, you've got, a, you've got a, a canvas, a conductor, to, 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 to pump it full of electromagnetic magnetic energy and place it anywhere you want on the globe. Is that what happened in Japan from the tsunami? Is that what happened in Haiti? Is that what happened in Chile? Is that why we're getting more earthquakes than you, from when records began in the 50s? Is it? It's a possibility. I'm suggesting that it is. They've got the technology, they've admitted they've got it, or, or that it exists, and uh, you're going you're gonna to bet you know, that it's going to be in the hands of the people with all the money and the alleged power. Not surprisingly, the patent had been previously sealed under a government secrecy order. It talks about the various systems there. It's going to take some sorting out when I get back home. <laughs> so we've got this weather weaponry. Raytheon's technology BAES was to develop HARP, ionospheric research instrument, 2003. BAE systems, BAE systems, advanced technologies outsourced the production and installation of the antennas to Phasar Corp, a company specializing in advanced wireless antenna for military use. It's all out there. It's all out there. It's not even declassified a lot of it, although they are beginning to close down the various websites, uh, official websites of theirs. So it's less difficult to get the information. And uh, that goes into the testing. Uh, I might make a little book of this or something and get it out to people. But it's, it's all there on the net to see. All I can do is pull out articles and give you my opinion and perhaps spur yourselves into warning the people as many as possible. Uh, that's why I'm here to do that. Anyone can do this. Get up and do this yourself in, the, in another hall, this hall. Anyone can do this if you, if you really want to do it. Hand out leaflets on the street, a hard-hitting leaflet campaign or something, but they are effective. You plant seeds and you never know. Um, I've noticed in the last year a great surge in interest in this. Virtually about 50%, and I'm not joking now, about 50% of the people know what chemtrails are. Oh yeah, harp, yeah. A year ago, that never happened. So we're getting through the mass media jungle of lies and deception. We're breaking through everything you do to raise awareness about fluoride, the dangers of vaccines, with mercury in them, and the aborted fetus tissue, uh, chemtrails, Codex Alimentarius, Agenda 21, where they want to shove you into cities from the United Nations. You won't be allowed to be born in the future, etc., unless you're a, a good <coughs> consumer. Otherwise, it's... So, everything, any issue you're raising that you feel concerned about, that's truthful and honest and has the best interest of humanity at heart, it does have an effect. Carry on, please, doing what you're doing. This is Simon Parkin, the BBC uh, Meridian Tonight. ITV Meridian tonight, Simon Parkin. Clouds that look like other things. <laughs> Hello, Simon Parkin. Uh, I have some common purpose. Uh, proud of us here. Clouds that look like other things. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsored by Hertz. So here, Hertz, there. That's chemtrail. I'd say that's chemtrail. I'm sorry it's not very clear. But here's another example. Ooh. Well, that's actual... Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's the picture. <coughs> I forget now what he, what he said it was. Oh, a hammer or something, or um, a feather or a bird. You know. Yeah. 
Got lots of news reports from TV people. Um, KSLA made a really good uh, program about the barium, high levels, massive amounts of off the scale levels, safe levels, over the safe levels of barium on, on American TV news report. They're thin on the ground, but they do happen and, and they just go wild and viral on the internet. People can't believe it, like, huh, they're telling us the truth <laughs> for once, you know? Uh, but then they, another program put Ken Caldera, one of the, one of the, um, I must stop doing that. I don't mean to make a pyramid symbol, sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, no. Ken Caldera, they had him on the end. They made a brilliant report. This is what you've got to look for. Um, they spin it and say, huh, I saw that in the sky, you know. Oh, chemtrails, rrr, rrr, barium, 80%, mm, this is terrible. Yeah, and then they got a geo-engineer at the end saying, these are not chemtrails, folks. These are contrails. Mm -hmm. And anybody, again, talking to you like a child, and anybody that says it's a chemtrail is, is, is a conspiracy theory. <laughs> you know, and, you, and you're asleep and you don't care. That's it. They put you to sleep with half-truths, you see. I always open my radio show on these changing times radio .ning.com. I always open my radio show saying that we're attempting to break through all the lies and deception of the mass media, which is uh, owned and controlled by the very elite that have engineered this global financial takedown. That's my summary, and I always open by saying that we're we're attempting to break through the lies. Now I'm going to change it. We are breaking through the lies and deception. Ooh, birds, clouds that look like other things. <laughs> Mr. Parkin has graciously presented us with some birds in the sky. Clouds that look like birds. Oh, that's a feather, apparently. Oh, that's a fish. It said fish underneath. I can show you the article. It may still be up there. But I fully intend to have a chat with Mr. Parkin, with a camera. Oh, come on. Yes? What's your response to that? Not allowed to talk about that. We're murdering you, and uh, this is my part in doing it. I'm, I'm going to move up the ladder if I carry on lying and going along with this crap. Keep breathing the aluminium. This is Brayden Murphy. She's about 70 or more now. God bless her, I've never asked. Wake up, look up, you're being murdered. Her face swelled up in Kildare, County Kildare. Powerful woman, I met her. Uh, my first rally that I organized was called the No World Order Rally in Dublin, right under, right under this big phallic Wellington monument as a, as a kind of a Stuff you, you know. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, wake up, look up, you're being murdered. She chained us, she's got so fed up, and all her friends got ill too. Her face swelled up, she thought she was going to die. And this woman can hardly walk anyway. I had to help her up the steps to the monument. I know she's ill, but her face swelled up. She chained herself to the Irish Parliament <laughs> gates. The police had to cut her free. So for any teenagers out there that are desperate to get over the video games and uh, Pentagon entrainment for war, then um, I'll take a leap out of this lady's book. Yeah. Yeah, the new world order, I know, I know it's real, and what can we do about it? Beep, 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 beep. Carry on doing that, you'll end up sending drones to Afghanistan. Because they've got Xbox controllers now as well. And, <laughs> Everything I'm saying to you, you can look up as well. Everything I'm saying to you is checkable. Brady Murphy. <laughs> what the truth out there? Oh dear, chemtrail plane crashed. Bumps a daisy. Bad takeoff. Misjudged the runway a bit there or something on some black smoke. Well, what's this? Is that fuel? 
fuel is always silver. That I'm willing to bet is aluminium oxide from the main constituents of chemtrail muck. <coughs> I was in contact with someone who lived near there and said, I'd just get over the fence and take a sample. Don't you ever get arrested or whatever, just, just take one little vial of that stuff and it's over. What are you doing with... It's all right, it might not be aluminium. It might be from the toilet or something, I don't know. But, oh, sorry. he didn't do it, he didn't do it. That's the chemtrail rally. That's the chemtrail rally. I organised in Cambridge um, on the 9th of July last year. 30 people turned up. That's great. 30 people. We've got a thousand pieces of information out to enthusiasts for war birds, you know, spitfires and everything flying around. And they, they didn't spray us that day, but they did a couple of circles in the sky and actually made a little happy face. That's it. People getting up there in wheelchairs, <laughs> dogs, chips in their dogs, caused cancer. Had to have them removed. <clears throat> These are normal people. These are not freaks, hippies. They're good people. Good people. <laughs> if only. <laughs> if only. This is actually a fake photo from Dees.com. Dees.com. Recommend it. But if only, you know, because they have to fly through this stuff too, the commercial one. I don't fly anymore. I don't want to fly through that. It's Manchester, Friday the 13th, 2012. Massive day. I made a YouTube playlist of about 30 videos from all around the world, Argentina, etc. It was really heavy, really, really heavy over Dorset and uh, all of England, France, I think, too. Ireland was heavy. And all across the world it's very heavy. Is that an occult? Is there an occult hidden significance to that by the elite that they have to spray everyone on certain days it gets heavier? But to be honest, it was very heavy last year, markedly heavier on one of the Friday the 13th last year, which is why I made sure I did it again. I film every day anyway. Um, but to be honest, they're spraying so much now, it's accelerated in the last year. That's a fact. Um, it's got heavier and heavier, so it's hard to tell. Uh, that's the reasons for planes, flights, still a mystery. That's the Worcester News I was going to show you. I'm a bit all over the shop here, but I've got a couple of articles I want to get to. And I want to introduce you to the, the engineer. <coughs> Apparently Bill Gates is funding geoengineering products. That's sweet of him, isn't it? Apparently he's in London at the moment. He visited a school to show how he, he got on. These people are front men, they don't make their money themselves. This is David Keith. May I introduce you to David Keith? <coughs> he is a geoengineer. He is, was on the House of Commons report as an advisor. David Keith. Yeah, that's him on Hard Talk, on BBC Hard Talk, expound, expounding the. Uh, the beauties of geoengineering and how we might need to do it all. BBC Hard Talk, where it's actually not that hard at all, they're probably both Masons. David W. Keith, Energy and Environmental Systems Group, University of Calgary. These professors, you know. Aerosols could be injected, this is a quote from him. Aerosols could be objected, injected into the upper atmosphere to engineer the climate by scattering incident sunlight, so as to produce a cooling tendency that may mitigate the risks posed by the accumulation of greenhouse gases. Analysis of climate engineering is focused on sulfate aerosols. And on hard talk, he openly talks about jet aircraft filling the sky with sulfurs and oxides. And this spice project is, is doing the same chuffing up stuff from, from, from a hose pipe type arrangement, you know. That's him. And he's also quoted as saying, and I'm, I may be paraphrasing, but he's, when, when asked at one of his lectures, and you can see his lectures on, on all over the internet, go to the university websites too. When asked about the possible consequences this might have 
should they do it in the future when they've been doing it since around 1996 around the planet? His reply was, well, it's, um, the evidence is not in yet. It, it, it's actually, it, it would be a bit like riding on the backs of our grandchildren, freeloading on the backs of our grandchildren. That's what he said. But we, it's all under discussion. You know, it's not happening yet. He's also the guy that said the cost is very, very cheap. It would be very, very cheap. Another chap is Alan Roebuck from Rutgers University. Professor, Department of Environmental Sciences, Rutgers University, New Jersey. Research interests, nuclear winter, volcanic eruptions in climate, soil moisture, uh, human impacts of climate change, regional atmosphere hydrology modeling, uh, and geoengineering. That's the term they use. His quote uh, from a paper he made, uh, a guest paper, a biased economic analysis of geoengineering, the potential <coughs> negative consequences of stratospheric uh, SRM, solar radiation management, were clearly laid out by Roebuck. Uh, 17 reasons why geoengineering may be a bad idea. But he's, he's into geoengineering. Geoengineering has come a long way since first discussed here three years ago. Policy statements. But all this attention comes with the message that we know little about the efficacy, costs, and problems associated with geoengineering, geoengineering suggestions and that much more study is needed. He's lying. We know very little about the efficacy and the costs and the problems associated. Why doesn't he just look up in the sky and do all the analysis himself of the soils and the waters? Why, why hasn't he related to all the chemtrail crap scientific evidence? Go to, why doesn't he go to Carnacop? Because he knows damn well. These people are in the pocket of their paymasters, the international bankers. They're heavily funded and they're probably brainwashed and loving it. Ken Caldera. John Fitzgerald is running for Congress. I don't know who he is. I don't know if he's a Mason. I don't care. But he's the only one, John Fitzgerald in America, uh, running for office saying, I want to stop chemtrails. Is the flu shot bad for you? I take the fluoride out of the water, John Fitzgerald. Ken Caldera, his present position, is senior scientist professor. This is the guy that said, anyone who talks about chemtrails is just a conspiracy theory. Yeah? At the end of a really decent news report, uh, they plonked him on the end saying that. <coughs> senior scientist professor, Department of Global Ecology, Department of uh, uh, Carnegie Institution. Make no bones about it. Call it what you like, New World Order, Illuminati Fati, um, Masonic Luciferians. <laughs> Call it what you like. There are a bunch of international bankers. And they are. They do satanic rituals. They do things at Bohemian Grove with owls and mock child sacrifices and run around in red robes. Yes, they do all that. The Carnegie Institution is an Illuminati <coughs> institution. It's where he's getting his funding. Postdoctoral research, the list goes on. And here we are, UK Royal Society. UK Royal Society, Ocean Acidification Report panel member. He's in, intrinsically linked with this false fraud of global warming and uh, we'll have to spray the skies to stop it. Can't have you too much, can't let the public have too much vitamin D that might be good for them, eh? We've got to spray it. Even NASA admit that the, the Earth is 20% dimmer now. So there he is. I did choose the most smarmy picture I could get, I must say, sorry. But it's not hard. There's John Fitzgerald handing it to him, saying, what's the matter with you? You're spraying the public. I see the chemtrails every day. That's the light, by the way, not the chemtrail. <laughs> uh, 
and there he is standing there, and he just happened to say the magic word, well, no, I don't trust what you say. And he's smiling and laughing. Ken Caldera is smiling at him. This man is worried about being poisoned, like I am, like you are. And there he is, ha, 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 the Mengele of geoengineering. Probably Mengele's offspring. Grandson or something, or Darwin's freak. They all inbred. You know Kate Middleton and William are twelfth cousins? That Cameron is the fourth cousin twice removed of the Queen of England? He's a patron of... Uh, it goes on. It goes on and on. And he said, well, I don't trust what you're saying. Well, I'm not going to talk to anybody that doesn't trust me. And off he went. <laughs> You don't say. But on a serious note, these are bitter, twisted, evil people. That's who we're dealing with. That's the asterisk over Procter and Gamble. Another lovely bit of irony I can present to you. Uh, was it Procter or Gamble that was Illuminati family? I forget now. They make all the medicines and the makeup for you. The, the, the makeup that has. Most makeup has uh, sterilants in it now, so over a lifetime of taking makeup, when you do decide to give up work and start a family, you can't. Because you've had B bisphenol A pumped into you from plastics uh, since you were a kid, and now it's in the food. In 1970, they knew damn well it made you infertile. So that's, that's the, that's, so keep sticking on the lipstick, girls. This is Neil Oliver, and I'll just finish up by I'll just finish it up by showing you some more <clears throat> media deception and uh, chemtrail entrainment, if you like. This is Neil Oliver, the history of Scotland. A proud Scotsman, prancing across the glens where he grew up as a wee boy <laughs> and still lives now. The history of Scotland, <laughs> land of the free. Well, just us, actually. <laughs> Land of the free, but not you. Us at the lodge, we're all right. He chooses, he chooses to show you. <coughs> I made a video on YouTube about this. He chose, he cho at the point where he's talking about there was an ancient law. It was a precursor to the Geneva Convention. Ooh, well, how did it go? No woman should be killed by a man, nor by pit, <coughs> nor by fire. Nor by poison, I get it mixed up, but, and, but you all shall die lawfully in your beds. And while he's telling you this story, he starts off with a sheep. <coughs> he's walking around in, under this sky. There he is. And I'm coming to a point. Oh, there's lots of chemtrail in the sky, could he, you know, yeah. There he is, looking up at the cross. Is it a rosy cross? No, it's a Celtic cross, we know. But nonetheless, an ancient cross. And he made a reference to priesthoods travelling uh, far and wide, uh, organising communities. There's another chemtrail sky, I can tell you that is. Uh, random, little, random little shots of skull and crossbones. Serpents. And eyes. <laughs> 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 So, and, and I can tell you virtually, you see what I'm getting at here? <coughs> yeah, little coded messages, if you like. You know. None of this is important to me. It, it, it makes it more entertaining. But what's going on with your subconscious? You know, what are you being, what's being proposed here? Or, or they're just simply communicating amongst themselves, etc. Is Neil Oliver a high-ranking whatever, you know? And, and I can tell you virtually every character they introduced, this is Calgacus, one of the first warriors to oppose the Romans, I think. Calgacus, apparently. Um, and when they show Wallace, and when they show Neil Oliver, uh, a lot of the time Neil Oliver will stand with his face in shadow and just showing you his eye, and it, it, it's a joke. At virtually every scene, when he's standing in a church or something inside, it's like, 
How many can we get in here? You know. And every major character that he's talking about throughout the two episodes I've seen, at least, um, show you his eye like that first. Why? They even do it with statues. But then they'll cut to that. You know. That's Cantrell. Very strange. I didn't include it, but also there was a tower, and the way they photographed it just looked like a pyramid shape. And why just not show the tower standing up straight? Yeah. Uh, no, I want you to stand under the tower and take a picture like that. That'd be really cool. It's just symbology, symbology, symbology. It's very interesting. But they've shown they've shown chemtrails a lot. You won't believe this history of Scotland. Have a look on some of the YouTube channels and screw the copyright. But it's just incredible just how, how much gall they've got. So what, what, what we need instead is <laughs> people like that, again, you know, with a bit of, with a bit of guts, you know. I'm non-violent, but I just wanted to show you this because that's me. I put my head on top of it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is a serious subject, um, but I'm, I'm giving you an idea of, of, the, of the creeps behind all this, you know, what, how they operate, how, what, what, what fun they have depopulating the planet and, and laughing at you. They're laughing at you. Evergreen Air. Uh, Evergreen admits to chemtrail contracts with USAF. They didn't say chemtrail contracts, but Evergreen Air, one of the largest private aviation companies, <coughs> admits to weather modification, among other interesting service markets. Uh, firefighting, oil spill containment, and biochemical decontamination. The Evergreen supertanker is not just limited to fighting fire. Can it operate globally? Evergreen is studying other applications for the supertanker. The Evergreen Air works from over 100 bases and employs 4,500 people in America. Delford Smith, Delford, not Del Boy running Evergreen Air, privately owns the company they admittedly performed for the CIA. Evergreen was given a no contest bid that gave them all the facilities in Arizona that previously belonged to CIA's Air America, the Penal Air Park, Arizona. The security at the Penal site is said to be as severe as that of Area 51. It is run as a military base where one lost pilot got an armed escort immediately off the operational base. So they're very touchy about their, that's the website. Sorry, it's not very clear. You can go to their website and check out how they spray things. <coughs> Uh, Evergreen's public relations propaganda spokesman is handled by WPP, run by Council on Foreign Relations member Philip Lader. He, wor he worked under the present head of the CIA, Leon Panetta, chump, as White House Deputy of Staff under Bill Clinton. Philip Lader is an inside authority on international business and affairs. He's a non-executive chairman of the WPP group, Senior advisor to Morgan Stanley, that's Rothschild, and a board member for think tank RAND organization, and St. Paul's Cathedral Foundation. Ambassador Lader has addressed transatlantic audiences from the UN's General Assembly Hall, uh, Commerce, Local World Accounts, he's a big player, and is a member of Rockefeller's Council on Foreign Relations, a key player driving towards world government in addition to, to running the public relations, that's propaganda, for Evergreen International Aviation. <coughs> and interestingly, Lader is a director of UC Russell, the largest aluminium producer in the world, located in Moscow, Sweden, Italy and Australia. Nathaniel Rothschild <coughs> is a big investor. Eugenic operations of chemtrails has had the assistance of MITRE, a non-profit organ operator. It's just all there. They're all just working together. Here's another article. Rabies vaccine to be dropped from the air. This is from uh, kvue.com. Kvue News, where trust is earned. <coughs> the Texas Department of State Health, well, they've done it, 
The Texas Department of State Health Services will drop vaccines from the air Wednesday. It's part of the annual effort to protect people and livestock <coughs> from rabies. They'll drop about 1.8 million doses of the rabies vaccine over the next month. The vaccines are enclosed in small packets dipped in fish oil and coated with fish meal crumbles. Bah. The baits don't pose a risk to humans. Remember, where trust is earned, it's a, it's a trusty news channel, the baits don't pose a risk uh, to humans, but organisers say you should avoid them because animals are less likely to eat the bait if a human has touched it. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Carley, Rebecca Carley, who I mention on air a lot and interview on air a lot, she's a world-renowned uh, vaccine expert. Uh, last week, a lady who came into contact with this stuff um, developed vaccinia, which is, it fell on her arm, she got vaccinia, which is linked to smallpox. So no, don't touch it. So that's Evergreen Air, and that's the news report. Uh, a green politician wants to sue the German government, so good luck to him. A former FBI chief, Ted Gunderson, says chemtrails death dumps must be stopped. This is Ted Gunderson, former chief agent in charge of the FBI Los Angeles, Dallas and Memphis. Right out of the horse's mouth saying these death dumps must stop. Well, he died about four months ago, five months ago, of um, <coughs> cancer, I believe. But now this story is emerging, was he poisoned? Well, I guess we'll never know. But there he was, a former FBI, telling you he's had enough. And that's the uh, Landwirtschaft die Vermeinen, the Green Party. Uh, Remmel, his name is. Remmel, it's very encouraging. Great. Sue the German government for the military operations. <coughs> Brilliant. Great. Politicians. Great. That brings awareness. But um, he's also pushing for a low carbon economy. So, okay. Good luck with that. Appreciate it. Thank you. This is one of my heroes. This is Alex Hunter in Canada, British Columbia, as he calls it, Sictoria. He's got a gas mask on there. He doesn't mince his words, he says depopulation. This guy is, and his children, teenage children, they have their own radio show now. Um, one of the best and most outspoken, clear speakers on this subject. I advise anyone to contact him, he's very approachable, any questions. Great guy, ill as hell. Apparently, they, as Alan Watts says, they spray more in Victoria than most places. <laughs> That's something else. One of the best and most genuine guys I know on it is Alex Hunter on, on Fedbook, as I call it, or Joker Tattoo on YouTube, and that is the right spelling. Three O's. That's the way he wants it. I just wanted to draw attention to him. Good man. Very knowledgeable on the psychotronic warfare. He, he, um, he reports that he's under attack all the time, under attack all the time, from the psychotronic weapons. Nearly done. Oh, end of slide. It therefore remains for me to say, and sum up if I can, I know this is a lot of information, a lot of you will be familiar with it already, some of you may not, and I thank you for coming. Um, look up the Dorset Biological Trials, they've done it before. Uh, stand on the street if, if you can and just say, look, they're spraying. I had the opportunity to do that the other day for the first time. Um, Plenty of news reports. There's lots of them. Go to cliffordcarnacom.com. Uh, I'm always sad that I miss uh, people or mentions. So I want to I thank everyone that's increased my knowledge over the last few years and, and, and coming here has increased my knowledge. So all that remains is for me to sum up and say that I started by saying that this is a war on humanity, and indeed it is. And your job now. As my friend says, you have a responsibility to do with this knowledge what you can, to punch a hole through the lies and deception of the mass media and deal with the brainwashing uh, retorts 
and comebacks you get from the public themselves. And um, break the spell and do what you can to alert people today. I don't often beg, I hardly ever beg for anything, but I beg you now, alert as many people as you can. This may be our, our last chance, we may be the last generation fit enough to be able to do anything about it. And visit cuttingthroughthematrix.com. I'm Patrick Lynch of The Free Truth Show. Thank you.